my channel if you're new here. My name is Bailey and in today's video I'm doing a little bit more of a different setup than my normal, you know, golden doodle slash doodle content instead of like a day in the life or something like that. I am doing a sit down video and more of a little bit of a more informative type of video but I think this is definitely needed especially since I am a golden doodle breeder and talking all things doodle I think this is stuff that's super important to talk about. Um, yeah, so if you're new here and you haven't already make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as hit the subscribe button down below it means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my channel if you love golden doodle stuff just lifestyle content anything like that you will definitely love it here on my channel we are definitely developing a really big community here around golden doodle lovers and things like that and it's just so fun to see all of your guys's comments all of my videos and things like that so thank you so much i really do appreciate it um uh, also i have considered starting all my videos like like hey dudes or something like that since we do talk about golden doodles like or sub not sub dudes but i think hey dudes it's like d-o-o-d-s i don't know it's kind of corny but i think it's really cute and kind of be something that kind of you know ties us all together so i don't know let me know down below if y'all think that's cute if you think it's kind of stupid it won't hurt my feelings so yeah today we are going to be discussing things that i think you should know before purchasing a golden doodle or any doodle for that matter um clearly i am a golden doodle breeder that is no secret to anyone here so you know I do love golden doodles and doodles in general, but I definitely do not think they are made or should be, you know, everyone's choice of dog. I know they're a great dog and that they are really popular right now, but I think there's a lot of things that people forget when looking to buy a golden doodle or a doodle that is really important when it comes to the type of dog that it is and the things that they require um, to have a successful and happy life. Um, and I definitely think that is something that's important for me to shed light on here on my channel. I know, you know, when you see a golden doodle or a doodle in general, you think, oh my God, it's so cute cute and fluffy and all these things but like any dog honestly it comes with a ton of responsibility and I don't think purchasing a dog in general let alone a high maintenance dog should be something that someone just takes lightly based on the fact that they just think it's cute or anything like that so that is going to be the purpose behind this video so yeah I'm going to be sharing all the things that I think you should know before buying a golden doodle or any type of doodle for your family like I said I don't think they're for everyone so if you want to know what I think you should highly consider before adding a golden doodle to your family keep on watching. Alright, so I have eight things that I think is super important when thinking about purchasing a golden doodle or a doodle. A lot of these can go for purchasing a dog in general. I think people make a really quick decision a lot of times when it comes to purchasing a dog and I think that's very irresponsible of people. That is why I interview all my families to try to weed out the ones who really in the long run don't want a dog like they think they do but they really actually don't. Um, really passionate about interviewing my families and getting to know them and if a dog or a doodle is you know particularly the right dog for them so I have eight of these things that I think you should consider before buying a doodle of any sort specifically golden doodles obviously because that's what I agree so the first thing that I think you should understand or know before purchasing a golden doodle or a doodle in general is that they are not considered or technically hypoallergenic. So I know a ton of breeders use the word hypoallergenic to sell their dogs and things like that. And I think a lot of breeders are honestly misinformed on what that actually means. Um, but no dog is necessarily hypoallergenic. Do I think golden doodles are allergy friendly? Yes, I do think they can be more, you know, friendly to people with allergies. But that does not mean that they are completely hypoallergenic. You can be allergic to different things on a dog. You can be allergic to obviously their fur, which I think is everything that people think that allergies come from when it comes to a dog. You can be allergic to their dander, their saliva, um, all like things like that that people don't consider when purchasing a dog. So a lot of people just think, oh, it's a golden doodle, the breeder or whoever says they're hypoallergenic. Like, yes, some instances you can get a doodle who is hypoallergenic technically, but they're a mixed breed. It's inconsistent. That's not always the case. So if you are someone who suffers with severe allergies, I really do consider getting a poodle or something like that. But even then, definitely do a test run because you could still be allergic to a dog's saliva. That's not related to their dander or their fur. So yeah, that's the first thing you should know is that it's not hypoallergenic. Like you can still be allergic to a golden doodle and you know, multiple different things when it comes to a dog so if some breeder tells you oh yeah they're hypoallergenic like you're not gonna have any allergies to this dog da, 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 they're lying like plain and simple it's a advertising word and a way to get people who have severe severe allergies or things like that to 
um, like purchase their dogs. It's not true. Same thing with the whole they don't shed. All dogs shed. It's like humans. We don't consider ourselves shedders, but we still lose hair. Dogs are going to go through the cycle of losing their hair. Like it's not the shedding you think of when you're thinking about like a husky or golden retriever, but they're still going to lose hair. Like you're going to get tumbleweeds in the corners of your house. Like things like that. Like yes, on occasion you might get a golden doodle that doesn't shed at all, but nine times out of 10, they're going to still lose hair or shed. So that's my thing on that. So that's number one. Number two is going to be that they are very, very active and require a ton of exercise. So if you're not someone who's very active and if you're more of a couch potato, don't get me wrong, these can be very cuddly, sweet dogs, but they're still large breed dogs, at least, you know, the regular standards, even the smaller mini golden doodles tend to have a lot of energy more so than other breeds and they're going to need you to you know get that energy out with them and for them if you are someone who works you know an eight to five and then you like to go out with friends afterwards you're not going to be able to have this dog honestly you probably shouldn't have any kind of dog if you want my real opinion um because I always tell people like expect for the first year of its life to not go out or do anything because you have to come home to your dog like your dog is away from me all day at work and I get we have to work we have to make money but then you're going to go out after work and not come home till 10 o'clock at night I just don't think you should even have a dog at that point but just know that if you are someone who does work an eight to five that you're going to need to schedule either like a dog walker or someone to come let your dog out in order to get their energy out now I know I'll probably have someone in the comments like my dog sleeps all day and he doesn't require all of that and yes these tips or things are general they're not for every single dog all dogs are different but in general golden doodles are very active dogs and they require a ton of exercise and walks and throwing the frisbee or the ball they love to be active so if that's not something that you can give that dog consider maybe like a Pekingese or a Yorkie I don't know something that will sit on your lap all day because these dogs require exercise and it's really really good for them and it you know, works their mind, you know, things like that. I don't know. It's just, if that is not something that you're willing to commit to, do not get a golden doodle or any type of doodle for that matter. So number three kind of contradicts, but not really. It's not really even the same thing, but that is that golden doodles can tend to be Velcro dogs. So the same thing I was saying, you know, if you're someone who works all day and then likes to go out, you know, your dog is not going to thrive in your environment because they love and crave human attention and affection. You know, they love being with their person. And I think that's the reason golden doodles are as popular as they are. But that also means that if you're someone who doesn't like, you know, a dog to literally always be on top of you or your shadow or anything like that, like you, like that gets on your nerves or something like that, probably not the best idea to get a clingy dog like a golden doodle. You know, get a dog that's not as clingy. Um, I know a lot of people love that in dogs in general, but some people don't. And... They are a Velcro dog, therefore you can't just be gone all day and expect them to be happy. You know, they want to be with you. They want to go do things with you. They want to see you. So this isn't just a dog you can get just to have a dog when it's convenient for you and just leave her around and laying around and expect it to be happy. So keep that in mind when purchasing any dog. Honestly, if you don't have time to make for your dog, you shouldn't get a dog, period. But people do. But anywho, especially with this, you know, I'm not going to say breed because here will come the doodle haters. But... With this breed in general, they're just Velcro and they're clean and they want to be with you. So if you don't have the time or want to put in the time to spending quality time with your dog, don't get one. So number four kind of goes with two and three. And that's the fact that golden doodles or doodles in general take up a lot of your time. So like I said, they're active. They require physical exercise. So that means you're going to be taking up a lot of your time, you know, waking up an hour early from work to be able to take your dog on a walk, you know, coming home after work when maybe you want to go out with friends or go to the bar to take care of your dog, you know, spending quality time with them at home, you know, maybe sitting out from something fun on the weekends with your friends because your dog's been up all week and you haven't given them, you know, the attention they deserve. They take up a lot of your time and this is dogs in general, but specifically golden doodles. I mean, they thrive off being with you playing, outside time, things like that. So it's going to take a lot of your time. I always tell people when I'm interviewing them for puppies, like if you are not willing to make the commitment 
to come home after work and spend time with your dog and feed your dog and take your dog on walks and you're not ready to give up a part of your social life for your dog, then don't get a dog because they take up an extreme amount of time, specifically golden doodles. So if you're not willing to sacrifice your time and put your needs second sometimes over your dogs, don't get one. So number five is that golden doodles or doodles in general are expensive. And I don't mean just to purchase, you know, they can have an expensive price tag just to purchase in general but i also mean you know overall like the whole span of their life and this is with dogs in general obviously i'm gonna keep saying that but you know this can go probably for a lot of dogs but you know they're expensive so when you have grooming so grooming golden doodles need to be done every six to eight weeks i don't care if you have a dog with a straighter coat or something like that and you groom them at home that's great but normally golden doodles tend to need professional grooming every six to eight weeks which is expensive for me to groom just one dog it's like over a hundred dollars so if that's not something you're financially or able to commit to or even want to commit your time to taking them to the groomer or something like that either one learn how to groom yourself or two don't get a golden doodle because grooming is expensive and it's necessary when you have a golden doodle the same thing goes with vet bills things like that you know Golden Doodles tend to have, um, you know, issues sometimes, you know, and that's another point so I won't get into, but vet bills can be a little bit more pricey because certain things. Also, a lot of times doodles have to have a quality diet, which all of your dogs should have if you don't have them on a quality, you know, kibble that's a little bit more expensive. Like each bag of dog food I buy lasts me two weeks and it's only about $65 a bag. Like they don't eat this cheap you know stuff you can buy at walmart and most of the time doodles don't do good on things like that so you have to be able to purchase a more high quality diet so if you're not ready to continue to put a ton of money into your dog one don't get a dog in general but definitely don't get a golden doodle because they do tend to be a more expensive dog to own so my sixth thing that i think anyone should know before purchasing a golden doodle or a doodle is that doodles need structure and training so because they're high energy, because they're super smart, I mean, they're two of the smartest breeds crossed together, I think golden doodles or doodles in general thrive off of structure and very good training. Any dog obviously needs to be trained, but specifically with golden doodles, I mean, they need to know their boundaries, you know, they can tend to pull because they have a lot of energy and you might not have gotten out. They can tend to chew things up because they've gotten bored. So I think a schedule and structure and training goes miles with golden doodles specifically you know like they need that and I hate when people say like crates are cruel or you know things like that because or like training tools are cruel it's not it's literally structure for your dog and dogs you would be surprised literally thrive off of structure they thrive off of a schedule and they will be 10 times happier because of it but that also kind of goes back to being expensive like you might have to undergo professional training with your dog that doesn't mean they're a bad dog sometimes professional training is just necessary to make your life and your dog's life better from the first day you bring your golden doodle home you know implement a schedule implement structure and you know who's the boss um not in like a negative you know way like being mean to them but just let them know that hey these are how things goes around here this is what we're not going to do and then also work on training you know with ellie we have our golden doodle that we kept back from indy's litter and literally the second you know, all of her siblings went home. I literally have been hand feeding her dinner to train her every single day because setting a good training foundation is so important to a happy doodle. Okay, so my number seven thing that I think you should consider before getting a golden doodle or a doodle in general is the overall theme of doodle hate in the world. And I'm sure I have a doodle hater watching this right now and they're gonna come for me in the comments and be like, oh my God, backyard breeder, mutts, da 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 da, whatever. I'm at the point where that does not bother me. Doodle hate is real though. And if you're someone who is sensitive, do not get a golden doodle because people are literally going to come for your throat just because of the dog you chose to have. It doesn't matter what I can say or what testing I do on my dogs. If I do all the testing, all the things, everything like that, on all my dogs, I am still considered a backyard breeder because I choose to breed and mix breed. And that's just how those purebred snobs are. And, you know, no hate to them. Like, that is fabulous that they're breeding their dogs for structure and things like that. But I'm breeding my dogs for temperament and for potential service facility, ESA, things like that. That is my long-term goal. Um, have we done that yet? No. But is that why we're continuing to breed and picking our moms and dads based on temperament and structure in general? Yes. But it doesn't matter. I could literally do everything right by the book, be 10 times better than a purebred breeder. It could be a true purebred backyard breeder and the purebred gods are still going to come after me and think I'm a terrible person for breeding golden doodles. 
same thing for like you only go golden doodle literally post your golden doodle on tiktok and see the hate you get because it's the doodle so if you're not someone who can handle that type of shame or hate or malicious comments don't get a golden doodle because it is real and it's ridiculous and it's just insane how hateful people can be about the type of dog that you choose to have but yeah if you can't handle that kind of stuff definitely do not get a golden doodle whatsoever because it is insane and real and my last thing that i want to talk about about things i think you should know before getting a golden doodle or a doodle in general is that doodles tend to have sensitive skin and allergies um this kind of goes back to them being more expensive you might have to spend more money at the vet figuring out you know why they have diarrhea why they're itching all the time but they do tend to be prone to allergies and sensitive skin for instance jagger has a chicken allergy so he can't eat any you know chicken byproduct now he can have like organic eggs from our chicken coop and you know regular chicken breasts and do really well on it but chicken byproduct and things like that he does not do well on i do want to mention though a friend of mine on youtube um she's also a breeder her handle is um, I'm going to put it right here at Padfoot Palms, Poodles, and Pals, I believe. I hope I got that right. Um, her name is Allie. She has a ton of great videos and information on like nutrition. She is actually a canine nutritionist. So if you're interested in like figuring out what works for your dog, um, if your dog does have allergies or sensitive stomach or skin in general, which all doodles tend to, not all doodles, but a lot of doodles tend to have, definitely check out her channel. She has some great videos on things like that and she is so knowledgeable. So I just wanted to give her a shout out real quick. So definitely check out her channel after you watch this video. But yeah, you just need to know that sometimes it can be frustrating owning a golden doodle and then having consistent diarrhea or, you know, they're itching a lot or, you know, just all of these things that kind of come sometimes with a golden doodle. Uh, I know we've had one that has been really sensitive, uh, has a really sensitive stomach that we kind of had to work around. It's definitely gotten better as um, she's gotten older, but I do see a lot of times that golden doodles do tend to have, you know, more allergies, sensitive stomachs, things like that. So be prepared for those things and maybe have to take a couple more trips to the vet to kind of figure out, you know, what diet is going to be the best for your dog. So yeah, that's going to be, I think, about eight things that I think you should highly consider before getting a golden doodle or any doodle for that matter. I mean, they are great. I love them. Obviously, I wouldn't breed them if I didn't. But once again, I definitely think um, they're trendy and people make a decision based off that. And I definitely don't think they're for everyone. They are a good family dog. Um, they can be great dogs when trained properly. But you have to have the ability to commit to something like that. A dog, regardless of what breed it is, is a huge commitment that I think a lot of people overlook before getting a dog, which is why so many end up in shelters, things like that, because people are not ready to make that time commitment that comes with the dog in general. But there's a lot of things that I think a lot of people should just really sit down and consider before purchasing a dog of any kind, but let alone a golden doodle with, you know, all the things that come with owning a doodle from their really high energy to their expensive grooms, things like that. These are things you should run through and make sure that you're ready to commit to before purchasing your first school to doodle or doodle. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video very helpful and informative. Um, if you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button down below. It means the world to me when you guys join the doodle fam here on my channel. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.